Hey, this is Kevin from Total Cost Involved. Today we're going to go over the assembly of our new C10 chassis. For you that have chosen the optional torque arm rear suspension, we're going to get started on that assembly. So the first thing is we're going to put the slider into the torque arm. So just like all the other locations, anti-seize is your friend. Go ahead and put some anti-seize on these threads and install the slider into the arm. Okay, so your slider here has a grease fitting. I'm going to put a little bit of grease in here to make sure it can move freely. Don't over grease this. If you do, you can create a hydraulic lock where this cannot move back. And if you do that, not the end of the world. Just take the zerk fitting out, push the plunger back in. It'll push the excess grease out and then put your grease fitting back in. All right, tighten the slider into the torque arm. Here's the hardware kit for your torque arm. You got a bolt for here and the other bolt's going to go underneath the rear end assembly when we get to that point. Okay. So next up we'll put our link bars in. This is the hardware package for those. They're going to install right here in these brackets. So when we install these, we always put the adjuster to the front. Mostly it's for aesthetic reasons because once it's installed, it hides in there quite nicely. We also have an option to put a Ridetech R joint in here for those of you that are going to autocross. So I'm going to put this in the upper hole. You have two choices here. What these allow you to do is change the angle of the bar at ride height and it changes the characteristics of the anti-squat feature if you're auto crossing your truck. Cool. We have access right here from the back side to get your hardware on. You also have the two windows on the front and the back to get the wrench in if you need those. And then repeat the process on the other side of the truck. Okay. Here's your sway bar assembly. We have the hardware to put it into the chassis. So we'll start by sliding the bar in the chassis. So slide the bushing over the bar, lift the bar up, get this started in, and continue putting the sway bar in right about there, and then go do the other side. So next up, we'll put the arms onto the sway bar. They're marked left and right. So put them on with the letters facing the same direction. You can see we have a countersunk hole here. That's going to face inboard on these chassis. So put this arm on. I like to pull them straight up and down so you can make sure you get it clocked the same way on the opposite side. And there we go. So here's your hardware to fasten the arm onto the sway bar itself. So for the next step, we have put the rear end under the chassis. I recommend having a couple of friends help you get it under the chassis and then support it on jack stands. You can see here we've used a tie down strap to hold it to the sway bar tube to keep our pinion angle in the ballpark so we can connect all of our componentry. Okay, so we're going to start with the bars. They're all the way closed, no threads showing up here. They measure 24 and 5 eighths from center to center. I'm going to install these in the upper hole on the rear end. So adjust the rear end to get the bar in a position and put your hardware in. All right. and repeat that process on the other side. So the way I like to install these is put a floor jack under the torque arm and then raise it up into position. Okay. And line up your bolt hole back here so you can get your hardware through.
So put the nut washer on. And now you've got your torque arm connected on the lower section. Next up, we'll put our pinion support tubes in and do the upper. All right, so here's all of our hardware to connect the pinion support tubes to the torque arm. We have the actual tubes themselves. We have four Heim joint bearings, two left, two right. You have two left and two right jam nuts. This is going to go through the bottom of the torque arm, through these to secure the bottom of the tubes, and this is the upper. So let's start by putting the joints into the pinion support tubes. So the part number that has the L, that's left, and the one with no designation is right. Once again, anti-seize is your friend. Definitely coat these threads, because you will want to be able to adjust this in the future. Once we get the truck completely built and it's at ride height, this will be one of your final adjustments. All right, now that we have both of the pinion support tubes assembled, we'll move back over to the chassis and install them on the differential and the torque arm. So I'm gonna put the bottom in first. And what I like to do with these is make sure that I match the thread on each end. So if it's right, I want right to be right on the top, left on the bottom. So do it however you like, but make sure that it's right, right, left, left. It'll make it easier in the future when you're making adjustments. So you're gonna put your pinion support down here, start your bolt through. Then you have a spacer that goes in between the tube and the torque arm wing. Set that guy down in there. And you bolt through. There we have that. The bottom is installed. Okay. So right now I need to lengthen the bar to get it to line up with the hole. So just hold it against the tab here and spin the tube until you see it line up with the bolt hole. Start your bolt through and add your spacer. For now we can take that other tube out of the way and check our alignment here. That looks pretty good. So now we'll bring our tube in and make our adjustment to this side. And there you have it. So later on in your build, when you're ready to set your pinion angle, you're just going to spin these. Just spin them together and adjust your pinion angle up and down. Yeah, so if you're spinning your yoke here to check the clearance, if this touches the torque arm, your pinion angle is too low. So that's a first start. Just simply adjust these tubes, which will tip the rear end back and raise the pinion. <clears throat> you can also spin it and make sure you have clearance between the yoke and the support tubes themselves. Yeah. All right, here's your shock hardware bolt kit. Five eighths on the bottom, half inch on the top. Let's go ahead and put your coilovers in. All right, let's put the lower bolt in. So you've got our bolt and spacer. Start the bolt through the shock, put your spacer in place, through the axle bracket, and put your nut in place. All right, now let's move on and put the other shock on. All right, just like your pinion support tubes, your sway bar links have left and right threads, so we have left and right heim joints and left and right jam nuts. So let's go ahead and put that together, and I seize all your threads and assemble both of your rear sway bar links. So there's your assembled sway bar links. We're going to move over to the chassis and install them. So we have our hardware for the top. This is the countersunk Allen head screw. I'm going to put the right hand threaded version on the top. So we put the bolt through your washer in the nut. Spacer. 
Now duplicate that process on the opposite side. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and put in our panner bar and then our stiffener bar. So we're gonna go ahead and put the stiffener in first in this case. So we're gonna put it into the top hole here on your bracket. And then over here on the chassis side, we have your tabs right here. And these are the, this is the bolt. We're gonna use those washers and the half thickness lock nuts. All right, all I gotta do is set this into the tabs and twist the bar until the holes line up. There we go. We'll just bring the jam nuts down, get those close for now. We don't have to tighten them yet. Okay. We're gonna put the panner bar in now. One thing I'll point out to you is that we have two different lengths of button heads. The longer is the chassis side of the panner bar because this bracket is thicker. We're gonna use the longer bolt on the chassis side and we use the shorter one on the rear end side. So we're gonna put the panner bar in and lengthen it until the bolt fits. We're gonna go with the head of the bolt to the rear, so we're gonna go be rear to front on this one because we have very little room between here and the shock. Okay, so on the drum rear brake option, you have this adapter right here. We're gonna screw this into the wheel cylinder. This is gonna allow you to hook up your Dash 3 braided steel brake line. Let's put the rear brake line on. We've got the fitting right here in the chassis. Screw that on, and then right here on your brake. And tighten both of these up, and we'll be done with that. Now that we've got the majority of the work done, it's time to go over the whole chassis and nut and bolt the entire thing to make sure that everything's tight, all the cotter pins are in place, if you have any questions, feel free to email us at tech support at totalcostevolved.com or contact us on the phone number at 855-693-1259.